Our chef is in uh, the house. Uh, we, yeah, we like to call him our chef, Timothy Dean. I mean, we go way, way back, uh, and uh, he is currently um, just doing some magnificent things. I should point out to you that Timothy Dean uh, has joined the ranks of the 17 uh, chefs uh, that competed on the, uh, I think it was, the, what, the seventh season of Bravo's Top Chef, if it wasn't the seventh season. Yeah, it was the seventh season, Joe, uh, NDC, Top Chef and, DC. And, and for those of you who uh, don't think that you can make it to the top by start, starting at the bottom, Timothy Dean started as a dishwasher. As, right? a dish, as a dish, I was busting suds. Just started from the bottom, now me. <laughs> as a dishwasher. And this is our special 4th of July show. And and every 4th of July, we like to bring Timothy Dean in because he always comes in with something different to do with that grill. Uh, the, and, you know, when you're out with uh, your friends, maybe on the, ba- on the uh, balcony or the patio, or maybe you're out at a park, hopefully, uh, you know, if it's a nice day where you're, where you're living somewhere in the United States. But let me just give you a little background. He, is, uh, he currently resides here in Washington, D.C. He has owned uh, several restaurants. He spent 12 years working uh, on and off with uh, Jean Paladin. Is that is how he pronounces it? Uh, a Paladin? Yeah, Paladin. Jean Louis Paladin. Paladin. And who was um, uh, uh, actually uh, uh, one of the first chefs, major chefs at the uh, famed Watergate Hotel. And um, uh, then he went on to own his own prime steakhouse in Baltimore. Um, and he in Washington, D.C. and uh, he has been chef to some of the uh, stars and celebrities of our time, a graduate of Howard University, and he was also named the university's Young Entrepreneur of the Year uh, not too long ago, uh, 2000. And, uh, you know, uh, your latest mm-hmm. adventure, and you, you know, it's interesting, you keep reinventing yourself, you know, <laughs> you really do. Your latest adventure uh, here in the Washington, D.C. area uh, is, uh, and, and I've noticed a lot of chefs are getting into the hamburger business. Yes. I mean, you know, what is it about that? I mean, uh, I, you know, I, I've seen these top chefs put their names on mm-hmm. gourmet hamburgers. Yes, yes. Well, well, now, just- what's the difference between a hamburger, <laughs> you know, a f- fast food hamburger, and a gourmet hamburger. Well, fast food hamburgers, Joe, um, I think, in my opinion, uh, they're cut with other products. Uh, so it's not all natural. Uh, with the burgers that we serve at Timothy Dean Burger, they're all natural. Uh, I do a seventy three twenty seven split on it, which I have a little more fat in mine. But I use brisket and chuck and as part of my grind. I think the difference is my burger, one, they're half pounders and they're cooked to order. But in our concepts, Joe, we don't have heat lamps like some of the fast food people do. Uh, I don't think Spike over at Good Stuff has heat lamps. I don't think Shake Shack has uh, heat lamps. And I know Ray's Hell Burger don't have heat lamps. So the big difference is, is when you come in and you order, I know at Timothy Ding, I can speak for what we do at Timothy Ding mm-hmm. Burger, is we make your burger to order. So like five, well, five guys doesn't make it to order. I, I go that because my grandson loves five guys. Yeah. But, or 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 like Red Robin is yeah. another one. Yeah. Uh, although they are, they are, they have a lot of things on their menu. Right. But what you're saying, it's made to order. Made to order. Okay, gotcha. It's not sitting there in it's the heat sitting. lamp. Exactly. Okay. All right. And, and I think the reason, one of the reasons why I decided to go into the hamburger business, Joe, is that I sat back and asked myself, as you know, I, I reinvented myself many times. I'm never stagnant. But I had to ask myself one day, how many hamburger places that I know of and have eaten at since a child have closed? And I couldn't think of one. Really? I couldn't think of one, Joe. Mm -hmm. I mean, there was, uh, I couldn't think of one hamburger, whether fast food or gourmet. 
Mm-hmm. The other reason, Joe, that I know that other chefs are getting into it and getting out of the fine dining business is it doesn't require a lot of um, top chef skills, so to speak, to do burgers. So if we were doing like steaks, as you saying, prime and my mm-hmm. lobster mac and some of my signature dishes like the sea bass, that, requir- that required me to hire a chef. Here I can hire a cook and the food cost is a lot lower. So you figure, let's take Largo fans. It's 98% of our burgers. In Largo, are, Maryland. Largo, right, Maryland. Right. I'm sorry. I, I keep right. forgetting you global. Right. Uh, Largo, <laughs> Maryland. <laughs> right. uh, we get about 90% medium well and well done. And so it's, you know, it's a process. You know, I don't have to have a fifty or $40,000 sous chef or chef de cuisine to cook burgers. Mm-hmm. And and uh, I, I, I do want to rush to our purpose of having you in here on the 4th of July. Okay. And and that is, uh, f- for as long as I can remember, and I guarantee you starting right now, <laughs> there's somebody out on that patio or somebody out at a picnic, and they've got the fire burning <laughs> and the flat burger. They might throw some, some uh, processed cheese on it. <laughs> I, I laugh because I know what I'm talking that's about. That's right, that's right. And they, and, and they take the spatula and, psh, and smash it down and and then slap it on some uh, a bun. And some say, Wonder Bread. And, so, and, say the, and say the burgers are ready. Yeah. <laughs> and the burgers are right, ready. Right. We're going to try to up the game. We're going to up the game, uh, up Joe. The we game, got to up the game. Up the game a little bit. And hopefully it's early enough where folk can get off to the stores right. and get the ingredients. So let, let, let's start, though, with, with something. I, I'll, I'll get, I'm going to get into the recipe. Now, okay. he, he has put together a recipe, for a menu for the 4th of July. It's for the Joe Madison now, Show. Now, wait a minute. Is this a, is this a I mean, is this doable? It's doable, Joe. No, really. It is. It is. I don't, I, I, these people would not have to start la- last week to get to no, practice. No, right. no, now, no, no, I no, thought no, about I'm, it. Now, listen to this. I no. want you to see this, hear this recipe, all right? <laughs> Y'all are up early this morning, right? Fourth of July. Stores are open. So chilled, now get this, chilled watermelon soup with tequila, honey, and fresh mint. That's the first course. First course. We want to do courses, Joe. All right. Second course, grilled head on barbecue shrimp. I mean, that's like the whole shrimp. Yeah, the whole shrimp. With what is this salad? Me- mescaline salad. It's green salad. All right. They sell and, it everywhere. And mango. And mango. Then third course, Jack Daniels. Jack Daniels. And what chimichurri. Is, chimichurri. Yeah. That's like a pepper or it's what? It's like a rub. I bought some. Rub. some yeah, it's like a rub, Joe, with parsley, garlic, olive oil. So all For the grilled meat. For grilled meat. So we step stepping the game up. Originally from Argentina. That's correct. All right. That's correct. And and that's on your ribeye steak. Or chicken or fish. Or, all right. With thyme roasted corn. Corn on the cob with some thyme. Some fresh thyme, Joe. We stepping it up here. All right. And then the fourth course, steamed <laughs> beer crab from Eastern Shore. Yeah. And then a side of coleslaw. Mm-hmm. But now listen to this potato salad with jumbo crab meat. Joe, who in, in the potato salad. In the potato salad, Joe. Come on, we stepping it. We on the Madison show. We gotta step this up. Then main lobster. Mac and cheese. You've had that, right? I've had that. Okay. <laughs> All right. Barbecue baked beans. And, and then pumpkin spiced cupcakes. Got to have a little dessert. But you can't. I mean, come on, man. And put this. And you, you can, can do, do this before you what? You can do it. You can yeah, do but it. but people wouldn't be able to eat until midnight. No, Joe. No, because all uh, this is simple. Let's walk through it. All right. Let's walk through it. Let's walk through it. All right. Now. Let's start with the first. Uh, chilled watermelon soup with tequila, honey, and fresh mint. Now, okay. I can find watermelon. Yes. Tequila I got on the shelf. Okay. Honey in the in the, in in the, the, in the, in the uh, cut cabinet. Right. Fresh mint you can get at any store. Any store. All so right, we're gonna, now what are we doing with so, this? So, Joe, what you want to do is we're getting older, and as you know, people don't want to go to barbecues, and they're not going to barbecues piling their plate up and trying to sit there until they pass out. So we're doing it in courses so you can pace yourself. So with the watermelon, Joe, you want to get you a nice, ripe watermelon. And my grandmother used to teach me because we used to pick watermelons down in the patch in South Carolina. 
you want to hit it, Joe. And if it has that real hollow sound, it's not ready. It's something. Yeah. And what you want to do is peel it, Joe, get a seedless watermelon. All right. Put that in the blender. Got to have a blender. Okay. Okay. You don't need an expensive blender, just a blender. All right. And add, I usually put about a cup of tequila to one watermelon. And then I do a quarter cup of honey. And then I do about 10 leaves of the mint. Blend it up, Joe. Right. And that's a shooter. Come on. That's it. You just got to blend it. Blend it. You seen these info commercials where they put all the stuff in the blender and then all of a sudden, bam, you got a shake that'll help you live 90 years. Right. Uh, this this will set you right on the Fourth of July. Yeah, and the tequila will kill anything you got inside you. But uh, yeah, right, so, and that's it. <laughs> right, right. That's and that's it. your first. And that's, that's your first course. That's a shooter. You put them in little shooter glasses, and right. then say if you want to get sexy, you do little shot glasses, and you chill it, Joe. First, you want to chill it. I'm right. sorry, you want to okay. chill it. The watermelon's already sweet. You want to add just a little honey to offset it. Right. Okay, to kick it up a notch and balance the tequila out and the mint, and then chill it. I would say in the freezer for about forty minutes. And then you just pass around a little shooter. So you want to cool people down. Yeah. And it's sort of like a cocktail, but it's watermelon soup, too. Okay. Could you could you serve it as soup? I yeah. mean, could you serve it in I, a small soup cup? Yes. Yes, Joe. I okay. had this on the menu in Baltimore when we were at Timothy Dean, at Prime, actually. Mm-hmm. And people today are still requesting this soup. They know it as a soup. All right. Uh, now, all right, so let's go to the second uh, course, and that's the gr- grilled uh, heads on on the shrimp barbecue. I yeah. love barbecue shrimp. Oh yes, I love Jim. barbecue shrimp. How do you barbecue shrimp? It's really doesn't take very long to doesn't do. Doesn't take it. long. No. All right. So what you want to do is let's say for instance, Joe, there's a hash sweetest uh, around the corner from the studio here in Washington D.C. All right. I went there on Sunday. They had North Carolina head on shrimp on sale for mm-hmm. five ninety nine. All right. Bought me a pound of them, Joe. I like the heads on them because in Europe and in other countries that I've been in. The head is where the flavor is. So what you want to do, Joe, is just put a little salt, pepper, okay, and then some fresh rosemary. Toss that around in a bowl with a little olive oil. With the shrimp. With the shell on. Don't peel okay, them. Don't, don't do peel any them that. or anything. Okay. Put them on the grill, Joe. Mm-hmm. You don't want to overcook them. You want to cook them till they turn red, okay? And then let them cool down for just a second, and then you just toss your barbecue sauce on them. You just toss the barbecue, Joe, and you're ready to go. And then the salad. The mescaline salad, you can use spinach, you can use free say. You right. know, you go to the grocery store, they got 50 different kinds of salads. Yeah, and all, it's oftentimes prepackaged. It's prepackaged. Right. They got mescaline prepackaged. And what I like to do, Joe, to kick it up a notch on the 4th of July for the Madison show, cut you one mango up and put in with the salad. Mm-hmm. It balances the barbecue sauce. It really sauce. does. Yeah. It balances yeah. the barbecue sauce. All and right. that's it, Joe. All right. Get you some shrimp, head on shrimp. And you don't have to be head on shrimp. You can do regular shrimp, too. Right. But, but you don't want to overcook them, and you don't. You can barbecue them on the grill. But I usually take mine off the grill, Joe, and then just heat up a little barbecue sauce, toss in with them, mm-hmm. and then just spin them around, Joe. Sir. Mm-hmm. All right. And and then that the other thing about uh, spinning them around the barbecue sauce, you don't burn them. You don't burn Because that barbecue sauce can burn easily. Right, on your grill. On your grill. And it's sticky. Uh, all right, Jack Daniels. Chimichurri. Chimichurri ribeye steak. Now, obviously, this is your main course. Okay, this is the main course, Joe. So whether you're doing chicken, fish, uh, or 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 any other type of meat, pork. Mm-hmm. The chimichurri works with all of that, including fish. Okay. And as you mentioned earlier, chimichurri is an Argentinian recipe that has parsley, garlic, olive oil, coriander. You can put red pepper in it. You can get creative. What makes it the chimichurri is the parsley, garlic, the olive oil, and the red pepper. Now, it's it, what do you? How do you? Do you rub this on the, yes. the ribeye? Yes, Joe. What you want to do is, if you really want to get the flavor of it, you make it ahead of time. The chimichurri. Chill the chimichurri for about 30 minutes. Mm-hmm. Take the meat, put the chimichurri on the meat, whether it's meat, uh, whether it's ribeye, chicken, or fish, mm-hmm. and then rub it on there. It's like a paste almost. Mm-hmm. Let that sit for about another 30 minutes, Joe. Put it on the grill, and you're talking about something, Joe. Now, the, now, now, and, and now, what's the biggest mistake people make when grilling a steak? Overcooking it. Overcooking it. I think for the, for the real grillers out there with Kingsford, Fourth of July, y'all. Right. You gotta have charcoal. Right. Is you wanna get that grill and them coals and them briquettes nice and red right. before you get that meat on there. Right. That way it's gonna cook quick and it's gonna have the flavor. Now do you divide your grill like it, you have a cooking side and a warm side? I, I've done that. Uh, excellent, where, excellent where question. You, Joe. Where your 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 briquettes, the hot ones are to one side. Yes. And then you have a, a side 
that where it's that, cool your cool down side yeah, we, we, yeah. we call resting that's Rest, that's yeah. an excellent question joe because you want your meat once you put the grill marks on it you don't want to keep going and then that fire busting up on it and overcook all right so you want to have a hot side and a cool side on your grill mm-hmm. so once you're done marketing and get it to the temperature as you want whether it be rare medium rare or well done you believe in using a thermos that yeah, determine? I mean, yeah, um, if you can. I mean, I, I don't have one. I use a fi- thermometer. I, thermometer. Not, yeah, yeah, thermometer. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, I believe in filling, Joe, but I'm a chef. Um, mm-hmm. But for the everyday cook, use a, use a thermometer. And chicken, the biggest mistake, undercooking? Undercooking and overcooking, Joe, making it too dry. So if they're doing breasts, and the, I think the best way to do chicken is have the skin on. That way you put the skin side down first and it's nice and crispy, Joe, mm-hmm. and then flip it over. But if you got that thermometer on there, Joe, you're going to go to about with chicken, about 165 to 170, 180 if you want well, well done. Mm-hmm. So and, I, and fish? Fish, the biggest mistake I think people make is they don't get the grill hot enough. And so what end up happening, Joe, is you put that fish on there, what happens? It sticks. Yes, right. And you can't get it off. If that grill is hot, what you want to do is season your grill like you do a cast iron pan, uh, Joe. Right before you put meat or fish on there, take a little rag, put some olive oil on it or Crisco, whatever kind of oil you got, duck fat, whatever you got, mm-hmm. and rub it on the uh, the, the grill. The, the grill right. Okay? Close it up, season it. That way you the, uh, the, put the meat and the fish on there, Joe, it won't stick. All right. Now, the corn? Corn on the cob. Oh, God, come on. Fourth of July, you don't get any uh, more American than corn. Um how do you do your corn on the cob? I buy fresh corn. All right. Or and fresh, not canned. And right. most of the grocery stores are gonna have it shucked already, Joe. So you're already a step ahead. And what I do is take some aluminum foil, a knob of butter. I put crab seasoning in my corn, Joe. And some thyme, fresh thyme, roll it up, put it right on the grill, about forty five minutes, you're ready to rock. You roll it up in lo- in aluminum, aluminum foil, foil. Mm-hmm. with the with the knob of butter. The fresh thyme and the crab season. All, all in there. And, all in there. And do you rotate it or do you? Uh, uh, yeah, I do rotate you keep it. Turning you the, keep turning right. it. And then for me, Joe, I just fill it. And you can tell when you're filling the corn, when the kernels get soft, you're mm-hmm. ready to rock. And then when you take it out, you open up that foil, all that steam, all that flavor, all that sexiness is coming out of there. It's just herbaceous. Now, we go to the fourth uh, serving, the fourth item, steamed. Beer crab from the eastern shore. Yeah. When I when I do crabs, Joe, we got actually I got to cook some for my pop tomorrow. Uh, I got him a half a bushel, which is uh, actually today. Today, I'm yeah. sorry, you, I'm you, sorry. Unless you're gonna have your father over. Right after. on the fifth. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Today, today, Joe, we're gonna uh, hook him up with some three and a half dozen crabs. And what I do, Joe, is I like to put some Budweiser with my crab. Mm. I mean, crab got to gotta celebrate the 4th of July, too. They mm-hmm. shouldn't just go out without having a celebration. So I put some, some Budweiser on them and crab seasoning and steam them, Joe. And there's no better crab, mm. no better crab than the Maryland blue crab coming out that Chesapeake Bay. All right. And now, I'm, we only got a couple of minutes but your sides yes. are like coleslaw, mm-hmm. so we don't have to go into any anything special, no secret there, Timothy um, Dean's secret. Basically, the potato salad with jumbo lump crab meat. Yes. Th- and that's just a matter of mixing that crab meat into the potato salad. That's it. And yeah. I usually use a little crab seasoning in Old Bay, Joe, okay. to pick it up. And, and I've had the mac and cheese, again, with Maine lobster. So, yes. again... You 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 cut up the lobster meat the, and just mix it in there, man. It it <laughs> yeah, and it is just it is out of this world. Baked beans, baked I, beans. I yeah. can do that. You can do the baked beans. Okay. And then pumpkin. We only have a pumpkin spice cupcakes. Yeah. Um. I tell you what, I'm going to ask. Can this? Do you have this on? Uh, online. I can put it. I can get it online, Joe. You know, I can I type mean, it up a little later. Well, I mean, you know. So let's do this. Okay. We're gonna put it on our Facebook. Okay, we're gonna put uh, we're gonna put all this on our Facebook. I'm great. Go global. Yeah, I'm going global. All right. Okay, we're gonna put it on our Facebook, and uh, it's it, it beat those little dry hamburgers, doesn't it? But oh. you, but all right. So this is the Fourth of July. All this stuff is available. It's store. available. We can go, Joe. We can go right now to Safeway if we had to or John, and I can buy every ingredient that's on here. All right. Timothy, Dean, it's always <laughs> fun to have you on. And uh, happy 4th of July. Happy 4th, Joe. And I know where I'm going to be eating later. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Don't forget the chimichurri. That's our new that's our new thing this Fourth of July. All right, all right, Timothy Dean, everybody here on with Madison.